All right, I was going to save this for a different video, but you guys have got me in a good mood. This is one of the Pokey Any mystery boxes we're going to start offering. So in this mystery box, there are 30 mystery packs. Now I know, mystery packs have some controversy. Trust me, I get it. I'm the based YouTuber that just speaks it how it is. I get it. Uh, my mystery packs are going to be a good value that you'll at least know what you're signing up for. There's a whole card list of potential pulls. We've got it all figured out. So I want to show you um, this one. Got a few options. This mystery pack is called Cyber Judge. There are five cards in here. And if you want to know your potential pulls, there's a website, TCG Republic. Now, I actually partnered with TCG Republic to get all of the potential pulls in this mystery pack onto a nice user interface where you can see what's possible. God, I really hope that dry humor like going on as long as it did. I, I'm, I'm interested to see how many people actually understood that I was a uh, haha raffle coptering. Every pack's a mystery pack. You don't know what you're gonna get. So there's gonna be a lesson in this video, I promise. And then we're gonna go over some Q and A uh, just from comments on YouTube, because if I'm gonna make silly videos, I like to have some bit of value too. So the first piece of value is flip flopping on, on opinions and policies as a YouTuber and as a content creator. So this twice baked Jake guy seems like a great guy overall. Um, I've watched some of his content. Basically his whole shtick for the past long time was, hey, mystery packs and box breaks and streams where, where people pay for packs to get open. They're, they're horrible and you shouldn't do them and it's a way funner experience doing it yourself at home. Don't pay YouTubers to open stuff. That, that's kind of been his shtick. You know how my shtick is like being dry and sarcastic and transparent and based and kind of a dick sometimes. That's like my shtick. This was his shtick for a long time. And the issue is, you know, he started deciding, hey, I'm going to start streaming on whatnot. Hey, what's up, um, Basically, he's like, hey, I was wrong the whole time. Uh, box breaks are actually great. I had no idea how fun it was. I was mistaken. Well, no, your opinion didn't change. It's just whatnot gave you a bag. Um... And he, he made a Q&A video, Am I Dumb, where he, he addresses the controversy, if that's what you want to call it. I I think calling it a controversy, I, I guess I don't care about him or the people that buy from him or watch him enough to, like, make a big deal out of it. it it's flip-floppy, though. It's a little cringe. So what this guy failed to do was keep his brand open. He, he went very hard in an opinion, which is fine, and then he flip-flopped on it, and, and you just can't do that. It would be like me going, hey, we are going to sell Pokey Any Mystery Packs, unironically, or hey, we're going to start, um, I'm going to start charging for a course, because my whole shtick has been, I'm never going to sell information. That's been my whole shtick. So if I flip-flopped on that, I would be, can't. I mean, this guy's, like, his like-to-dislike ratio on this video is insanely bad. And the important thing here isn't to hate on this poor guy, it's, it's to illustrate that it doesn't always matter what you do. Whether it's good or bad, it matters what you've said and then what you choose to do after you've said it. So streaming on whatnot, not inherently bad. Box breaks, not inherently bad. I did box breaks. I made a ton of money doing it. I made a lot of money. I met a lot of cool people. Some of those people I'm, I got to meet in person at like Collecticons and, and stuff like that. I got to play with cards and see them in person. It's fun to open stuff. And it was a fun thing to do all night because I'm manic and I don't know how to sleep. So nothing is wrong with box breaks, packs. I think mystery packs... I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it because I don't care about any of y'all. I think they're all scams, period. I don't care if it's Pokey Rev or this guy or that guy or this chick or that. I think they're all scams or not necessarily scams. I think they're all um, strategies to get rid of product that is dead or not sought after. That's what a mystery pack is. I do it with bundles for sure. Like we have this Korean bundle where um, the Scarlet and Violet Korean, those sets suck. No one wants them. They don't suck, but nobody wants them. They, they Selling them sucks. So what do I do? I make a 15 pack bundle of Korean booster packs. I put some really good bangers in there. Eevee Heroes 151. And then I, I sneak in the Korean Violet and Scarlet just to get rid of them. The difference is I have a picture of all the packs and a list of all the packs that you're guaranteed to get. So it's not a mystery pack. It's just a bundle where I'm trying to offload crap that no one wants. That's what a mystery pack is, in my opinion, from anybody, good YouTuber, controversial, whatever. So if this guy does mystery packs, I can't support that at all. The fact that he wants to do whatnot, though, and sell stuff and make money, there's nothing wrong with that. The problem is 
he has developed a brand and a brand image where he is against that. And now, since I assume, allegedly, I assume Whatnot's paying him a bag, now he's like, oh, I changed my mind. That's the problem. So the lesson here, that's the news part. The lesson here is if you want to start a brand of any sort, Pokemon, YouTuber, whatever, be careful what you promise your audience because at some point you are going to get big. Like this dude's got 134,000 followers. I have 15. I'm, I'm a big deal now. Like I'm super stoked. Thank you guys. If I made a promise that, Hey, I'm not going to ever sell a course uh, when I had like say a thousand subscribers and now I have 15 and now I could make an ass load of money selling a course. Like I did the math just for fun. And I think I can make a hundred grand a year selling a course easy. Just not, not that I like sat down like, Ooh, should I do this? But just watching other YouTubers, um, some YouTubers I, I respect, like uh, Bia Heza is one that I enjoy. And I just, I'm like looking at what they're charging for a course. And I'm like looking at my audience and I'm like, God damn, look at my audience. But I can't do that because 14,000 subscribers ago, I made it very clear that I will never sell out on a course. And I will never, and, and sponsorships regarding um, uh, Pokemon and TCG, I, I will never, I will never do that. I will never sponsor uh, any TCGs. I will never sponsor any grading companies. I can't do that. Even if I want to do now, I cannot do that because I made promises that I will never do that. As far as other sponsorships, um, I'm not sponsored by anyone, but I, I get free stuff sometimes. Like I got this free chair. I get a fat 20% affiliate commission. If you buy this chair with the link, pokey ne links in the description, because that, that doesn't hurt my bias. You guys don't care what chair I use. The fact that I Somehow, sometimes I have a secret lab chair. Sometimes I have this chair. Sometimes I sit in this crappy little $40 Amazon chair. Honestly, it depends on what chair my dog's sitting in at the time. So I kind of flip flop them. That's a sponsorship where I'm like, yeah, I'm going to freaking get my free. It's a $500 chair. I got this sucker for free and it's great. So yeah, I, I'm going to take free stuff and shout it out if I like it. And if I'm very clear about it, because this doesn't hinder my... Uh, legitimacy with selling trading cards, grading companies, uh, cases, I don't know, conventions. Like, I'll never be like, go to Collecticon. I get, you know, 20% for your ticket because that's trading card related. I've made it very clear in previous videos, I can't ever do that. This guy's made it very clear that he doesn't support, uh, rip and chips and box breaks and now he's doing it and that's why people are pissed off so do, does his does this audience are they justified in being angry yeah they are because what he's doing isn't bad but it's what he said in the past and then flip-flopped that's bad so i think it's a horrible move honestly like i'm not mad at you you seem like a great guy genuinely but a uh, stupid move business-wise not quite as bad well i don't know like the budweiser move um with Dylan Mul Mulvaney, I think is the Budweiser thing that we all know about. That was a stupid move. Um, but it wasn't so much a slap in the face to Budweiser's audience because they never really made a statement like, oh, we don't like, you know, this type of person, these groups of people. Like, they just kind of had an inherent um, vibe. But folks like me and, and, uh, twice big Jake, you know, we outwardly tell people what we are for and what we are not for. And so flip-flopping on that, it can cause some serious brand damage. Do I think, um, his audience will get over it? Yeah. Do I think he'll make a, a lot of money on whatnot? Maybe, but, um, ultimately the whatnot, uh, partnership sucks anyway. I made a whole video on this because they called me. So I, I know what he's probably getting. Uh, whatnot called me like, maybe a month or so ago and I made a video on it so check it out and I told them I'm like hey you know I don't do rip and ships anymore number one if I did number two I I do it on twitch like I used to do and number three I, I'm really not interested I make an ass load of money by myself I don't need some multi-billion dollar company shoving more cash down my throat but I did tell them but I'm interested I'll listen because I, I'm just I'm a curious little George you know I wanted to hear what they had to say so this was Whatnot's pitch to me, and I, I might get some numbers a little off because it's been a little bit, but watch the video. They didn't pay me money. It wasn't like an upfront bag. It was, uh, I think if you pitch, if you get someone to sign up with your Whatnot link, they get uh, like 10 bucks or something, and then you as a content creator, a, a normal everyday person gets like $15 or something similar to that, and then if you're an influencer, 
and someone signs up with your influencer link, you get like $25 commission. That That's what they pitch. Maybe this guy's got a better deal because he's, he's a bigger deal than me subscriber wise, maybe. But it seems like that's what not's pitch to influencers right now is we give you an extra 10 to $15 affiliate commission and then they give you free stuff to give away. But their offer was like, it was like, oh yeah, well, we, we send you two ETBs every set. <laughs> like, bruh, that's like $30, uh, okay, $60, like. That sucks. Like you're like whatnot is a freaking joke. I don't know if Blake's breaks um, bankrupted them. I don't know if Blake's breaks break whatnot or what, but that is the crappiest affiliate deal I've ever heard in my life. I've had little companies reach out. Like you, you've heard of. I'm not gonna say names, but like little grading companies, um, streams similar other streaming platforms, where they at least give you a salary. Like, uh, oh, it's so funny. So. And, and for the record, by the way, I, I did a, a salary job with Network uh, a couple years ago, two years ago or so. And this was before I was a YouTuber. This is just when I was like, I streamed on Twitch. I never made any, uh, I never made any statements regarding like sponsorship deals. So this was a while back, but I know someone's going to dig that up. So full disclosure, I got paid uh, to stream in my past life before I was Pokey Any on YouTube. And that was a good amount of money. I can't say the amount because I signed a non-disclosure contract, but it was a livable salary um, in Omaha, Nebraska. So like here, like at, at the time, my house was like $1,200 a month for mortgage and then car was like 300 bucks a month. It was a livable salary. I didn't have a YouTube following. I had a Twitch following. I only had maybe a million or two in sales. I was a newbie and these guys offered me a freaking salary. They had some Goldman Sachs investment money, a little, little venture capital and whatnot. To, to my knowledge, they're a way bigger company than network. And I'm like, a better affiliate deal? What? And to make it worse, everyone has a whatnot account. Like they don't use it probably, but you probably have one. You probably at some point signed up for some free gimmick. The affiliate commission for influencers only works. It only kicks in and gives your customer free crap and you a commission if they're a new customer to whatnot. So chances are of my 15,000 subs, probably like 14,800 of them at some point sign up for whatnot. So the little percentage of people I would shout, I would like convince to get the app probably already have an account, which means they're not eligible for anything free and I'm not eligible for any uh, commission. So it's, it's actually brilliant what whatnot's doing because this guy who's extremely popular I bet most of his audience has whatnot already and anyone he converts, they're not going to get anything and neither is he. It's, it's brilliant. They're getting customers for free promising an affiliate commission that they're never going to have to pay out. And I talk about all this in the whatnot video. So if, you, if you're a curious George yourself, go check out the video. I just, I think it's so funny. So uh, I think we talked about that enough. Um, I wanted to give some more value. So uh, again, when I was joking around earlier, because um, I think this is actually valuable because people ask me all the time. When I was joking around saying I partnered with TCG Republic, uh, obviously I was lolling, but this really is a great website for like Japanese singles. So if you want to know um, the, the the sets, what what's consisting in a set and the value of stuff on the market, like this is a really good website for that. So you can see the cyber judge the reason it's so damn cheap is because the chase cards are, are very cheap on the market so great website a tcg player is like the english version of this a lot of you guys have heard of tcg player if you like the asian cards tcg republic is great so that's your first piece of value uh, some more value is just youtube comments that i can kind of read um i have it programmed to just show me the questions uh so this person what company would you go for through grading I don't really shout out grading companies because I think they all blow. Um, PSA, I think objectively is the most li like easily liquidable. Like if you want to like get liquid money fast, I think PSAs sell faster. I, there's probably someone that's going to disagree with that. And I haven't done research to back that claim. It's just, it seems like PSA slabs sell faster than the other ones. So for liquidity, PSA, um, I made fun of PSA recently because Again, they've kind of been like sucking a little bit. They give goofy grades to cards that don't deserve them. They give low grades to cards that do deserve them. They grade um, cards with things drawn on them. If I'm not going to say anything else, but you guys have probably heard the story. Uh, CGC, they've made some goofball mistakes as of recent. BGS seems like the one that's screwed up the least lately, but... 
So what would I go for with grading personally? Like me, I, I would go with, with Beckett just because I think they're classy. And I think they've made the least mistakes. They're also not the most popular. So like you got to look at like, oh, well, PSA grades a million cards every freaking hour or something. So of course, more mistakes are going to come to light. So there's some bias there. Um, but me personally, without doing any research, without the intent to sell, I like Beckett. And that's just my opinion today. I, I'm not I'm not really too invested in it. So I'm not a good question. I'm not a good answerer of that question. How did you get big distributors without having a brick and mortar? I've answered this several times, um, but I appreciate the question because now you can look back at old content. I started my business three years ago with Japanese cards only, Japanese and Korean. And we racked up about a million and a half of sales just by myself selling Japanese cards that I got from uh, some sellers on Instagram. Well, thanks to that and thanks to some YouTube clout and me being on Vice News. Vice is that like TV channel that has like the drug lords and like the weird content. I got on Vice. They did like an entrepreneurial special thing. And so I had an episode and uh, aired on HBO too. So I was on TV. But that's that's why. So the... The distro saw the Vice show. They contacted me. They said, hey, are you a serious seller? I sent them some sales numbers. I'm like, yeah, I sold a million dollars this year. Like, give me some stuff. And it worked out. So they do make exceptions. Um, Peach State is a new distributor I have. They just came to me like a few months ago, six months ago or so. They saw my content on YouTube and were like, hey, this guy looks like chill. He's clearly doing decent sales. We're going to make an exception. And they hit me up. So they do make exceptions. It's not always not just like only brick and mortar. It's just for the most part, they only work with brick and mortar unless you you do something kind of like different. So there you go. Looking to do ripping chips in my free time. What's the best way to start out doing this? Um, yeah, I, the people that ask questions like this, like, is this enough to get started? It, yes, you're not going to sell five booster boxes in your first stream. You're going to sell like five packs. So, and this isn't, I'm trying to be encouraging here. like. You can start with one or two boxes and that's plenty. Like you do not need to invest thousands of dollars into this industry. I've got some new people, some new ripping shippers that are like, yo, I really want to, you know, hit the ground running. Like, and they buy like a freaking case of something. They spend like $600. I'm like, dude, you don't need this. I tell people straight up if they ask me like this guy, I'm, I'm telling you right now, like you don't need to buy all these booster boxes. Start small. Shiny treasures, get like two boxes of shiny treasures, get, uh, Temporal forces next month. And like, that's it. That's all you need. Build an audience from there. Well, I know shipping to Australia. Uh, I love my international audience on YouTube. Unfortunately, shipping internationally is very difficult um, for a store like mine, where number one, I'm not really a big deal. I'm, I'm pretty small business. And number two, there's so many different sizes and shapes and weights of this stuff. Like to properly guess how much a package is going to weigh, because some people will buy like or ETBs, which only gets me you know, a few bucks. ETBs suck, but they're massive. And so that package is going to cost like $80 to ship to Australia. And then the same customer could buy like, you know, four booster boxes of 151, which each one of those is like 200 bucks. And it's only this big for four booster boxes. So it's impossible to like train the program to recognize not only weights, so that's pretty easy, but also sizes and how to configure them. Like if someone orders 10 ETBs and then a booster box, that really sucks because then I have to ship a whole case of ETBs and then ship a separate box with the booster box in it. So that's two packages going across the ocean. Very expensive, very risky. I'm just not ready for that. Maybe one day I will be. Um, I do have an eBay account, which I don't, I'm not very active on it, but it has global shipping and I'm going to kind of work on making that better because so, eBay allows me as a seller to ship to like Kentucky, their headquarters, and then Kentucky takes care of the global shipping on my behalf. So I'm good with that on eBay. It's just the prices are higher because I got to charge 13% because they charge me 13%. So then you might as well just buy from some other eBay seller. So yeah, sorry. Thank you for watching though. One piece for the long term safe to invest. I've made a lot of one piece videos. People get really mad at them. They have pretty bad uh, like to dislike ratios. Y'all are crazy. Buying this one piece crap for five hundred dollars. It, it to me it's stupid. I really hope I'm wrong for your sake. But just because you spend a lot of money on something does not mean you're an investor. I think people get this like confused that they're like, oh yeah, I spent like two thousand dollars on a case of one piece romance. Don't. I'm like, bro, you, you probably are going to lose that. 
or at the very least, it's going to stay stagnant, or you're going to have a $2,000 case sitting. I'm just making this number up, by the way. Don't fact check me on this. Sitting in a closet and then, oh, your dog's sick. Oh, your car broke. Oh, you're getting a divorce, whatever. Well, now you're going to have to sell that quickly. So you're not going to get what you paid probably. And even if you do get what you paid, since you don't have a big fancy store like Brian, you're paying 13% fees on eBay and shipping. And so your $2,000 turns into like $1,700 by the end of it all. And uh, you'd also sat in your closet for a year. So no, I, I don't think this expensive, I think, I think if you're buying one piece of MSRP, it could be a good move for sure. Um, Bandai is the, the people that print one piece and every single set Bandai's ever made, they've reprinted because they don't really care about your investments. They, they're, Bandai is not a company that's like, Ooh, you know, the secondary market's important to our R6. They don't care. They just print stuff based on demand. So they've already said, Hey, we're going to reprint all the one piece sets. I don't know how many they're going to reprint. They haven't said how many, but they've already said, yeah, we're going to reprint them. So if I was someone that spent 400, $500 on romance Dawn a month ago, and I heard that news, I'd be a little scared. If I bought a romance Dawn at MSRP, I'd, I'd be pretty comfortable with it. But I would say if you're interested in investing in one piece, look at what Bandai did to Digimon, look at what they did to Dragon Ball and just kind of go, okay, you know, I don't know how, and, and people out there like, oh, One Piece is a way bigger anime than Dragon. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. People say it with Disney too. They're like, oh, Disney's way bigger than Pokemon. Number one, it's not. Disney is not bigger than Pokemon, but the recognizable characters on a trading card, they don't matter. It's, it's the management of inventory, how fun the game is, and, uh, and, and ultimately just how collective, how nice the cards are, the, the just subjective art of them. It's a very subjective market. Jesus, uh, this is my example, Jesus, Ronald McDonald, pretty recognizable, and Santa, Santa too. Those three are probably the most recognizable, like, things on the planet, right? Like, everyone knows what they all allegedly look like. You cannot tell me that a McDonald's, Jesus, or uh, what was the other thing I said? Santa, a trading card game, would be popular. You see what I mean? It, it's the same thing. They're extremely recognizable. They're IPs. The IP of Jesus is a multi, probably trillion dollar. The, the Christian church has a lot of money. Just because they're worth multi trillions of dollars does not mean they'd make a good TCG. So just keep that in mind. Lost Abyss back soon? Probably not. Where'd the beard? Uh, I love that comment. The, the beard's coming back. It's coming back. Is there a way to dodge USD to Japanese conversion? Uh, no, you are the victim of the current conversion cycle. When you're buying in bulk and you do it long enough at scale, it starts getting negligible, negligible. But yeah, when you're buying a couple booster boxes, it hurts if the uh, USD to Japanese yen is positioned in a way that's not ideal. Um, it does add up, but again, once you scale, you, you just you ignore it. You price it in, so there's no way to avoid it. What labor maker do you use? Uh, Rolo. Rolo labor or uh, lab label printer from Amazon. It's like 140 bucks. It's got a little purple on it, a little violet. Uh, I answered international shipping already. Sorry, Germany. That's a very good question. If I had the answer to that, I'd be rich. Part two of how to build a site coming soon. I promise I've been working on it. Where can I find Japanese and Korean boxes? Sell pokeany.com. No, find a distributor, find a supplier on, on Instagram. That's where I found all mine. I am making a video showing you exactly how to do it. So hang tight on that one. This is regarding the uh, stupid Van Gogh Pikachu. When do I think it'll be at the lowest? Honestly, anyone that claims they know the market on this, they're lying or they're delusional. Pokemon has gone back and forth on its word more than uh, this YouTuber I was talking about earlier. Like... They're done printing, and then, oh, nope, we're going to release this many, and then, oh, nope, we're actually not going to release them here because the LGS stores are being criminals. We're going to put them in big box stores, and then, oh, yep, that was Netherlands. Now we're going to go to... Ain't no way to know. If you want the card, buy it now. I wouldn't buy a bunch of them, personally. Um, I started with one Japanese supplier, and now I work with about four. It's good to diversify, because if even if you have one good guy and he gets hit by a bus, then you're screwed, so... I have like four. I had one for a year and then I expanded. So there you go. Um, ba -ba -bum. Other than Pokemon, flip the switch. Yeah, 
Yep, agreed. Do you buy... Uh, everything's wholesale from me. I mean, except for Japan. I, I pay, a, you know... Uh, you, Japan does not work with, with Americans directly, so I buy from a vendor in Japan who buys from a distributor in Japan, so I'm paying, like, Japanese market prices. Nice flowing hair you got there. Thank you. Thank you. This must have been before I cut it. Um, ba ba bum Yeah, uh, as far as like, but you, but it won't arrive. You, you can basically put whatever the hell you want on your website, eBay and like TCG player. I don't think you can sell stuff like months in advance without going through some hoops because like eBay is going to want you to ship the item like within three days. If you have your own website, you can just tell people when you're going to ship it. So I have several items where I'm like, you know, temporal forces ships March 22nd. And then I have a little disclaimer that says, if you buy other stuff in the same cart as Temporal Forces, I ain't shipping that separate. It's all going to ship in one bundle. So some folks, they'll buy Temporal Forces and they'll buy like a Ruler of the Black Flame and they'll put that in one order. I'm not shipping this out until March 22nd when I ship out Temporal Forces because I ain't shipping out two packages. As long as you're clear and honest with your customers and the description of the item, you're good. I promise you, I've been doing this a long time. So you're Gucci. They will pay you and they will wait. They always do. Um, this is not a real problem. I've talked about this before. It's uh, once in a great while you're going to get people that buy stuff, charge it back, and then keep your product. It's very rare. I've sold 37,000 orders now. It's happened a handful of times. There have been some big scamming operations where people are stealing credit cards and using them. And I, I've talked about this in previous videos, so I'm not going to beat a dead, meta, a dead horse. But... It's very rare, and if that's the only thing holding you back from starting a business, either you just needed to hear that, and I hope that helped, or you're making an excuse. So, go for it. You got this. Um, <laughs> Want to track and see what happens? Absolutely. Profit margins 15 to 20 per box. Yeah, uh, eBay does eat a lot of that away. I would suggest what I've always said, build your own website, Wix, Square, WordPress. I would not use Shopify unless you have official invoices from an official distributor, because if you do not have official invoices from an official distributor pr proving that your product is legit, Shopify will shut you down. So Wix, Square, WordPress. I can only speak on Wix though. That's the only one I ever used. They're freaking fantastic. Because, yeah, 12, 13, 14% commission, you're you're done. Just don't even start a business. Uh, how many capitals? Ease of spending $200 to make $6. Feels backwards. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the margins suck in this industry. Spending $200 to make 6 that's kind of an exaggeration, but, like, it's not much better than that. You know, you, you'll spend $200 and make, like, 20 so the margins suck. It's all about volume, baby. So this is an inside joke. Uh, Dragon Ball Z, yeah, Dragon Ball is the same as the other. I mentioned it. They they'll overprint them if you want to buy them for your own enjoyment. Freaking go for it. The investors are the people I'm worried about. Uh, this already happened. All right, there. That's two weeks. We went back two weeks. That's good. Enough. This video's getting long. Uh, okay, so yeah, so we we made a silly haha -ha about mystery packs. We talked about basically stink, sticking true to your shtick, staying true to your word. Uh, we went over some questions. Uh, the only other thing really that I guess we can go over quick is just some news in the industry. There's some exciting stuff. Well, not much, honestly. Uh, Pokebeach.com is a website I use. A lot of folks ask, like, hey, where do you get your information, your insider info? I have a distributor. I have two distributors. I'm not special. They don't tell me anything. They're great people, but I, I, you, there's no distributor like secret club. Like I get all my information from Pokey Beach, like all of you guys do. So in May, the English set has been named a uh, Twilight Masquerade, which is uh, Ogre Pond, the Heel Mask DLC guy here. I haven't played it yet, but it looks cool. So that'll be May 24th as SV6. That'll come after Temporal Forces, which is March 22nd. And uh, yeah, so they're going to be based on these sets, uh, Crimson Haze and Mask of Change, which will be Japanese, and we will absolutely have those 
From what I understand, these sets will both be very cheap, just like the past several sets. So I would say $65 is probably the the range. It could be cheaper, probably 60, 60 to $65. Anyway, thanks to Poke Beach for that news. Uh, that's all I got to say. Let me know if you like this type of video where I just kind of talk. They seem to do really well in the algorithm, these long form videos where I just blab. But editing sucks. I don't have time for it. I'm stressed out all the time. I've got a whole freaking business here. So honestly, these like no edit videos, I'm kind of digging. So if you guys are digging them too, let me know in the comments. I do have a promo code out on the website. It expires one week from this video upload date. It is Pika10, like P-I-K-A, Pikachu, P-I-K-A-10, one zero. And that'll save you 10 bucks on an order of $100 or more. So you can use that if you want. But uh, yeah, pokeyne.com to buy my stuff. Again, I get 20% every time you buy one of these chairs. E1 Racing, they're great chairs. They're, it's the same as Secret Lab, if we're being honest. Secret Lab's my, my first baby. This is a cloth version, so it's very comfortable. I get 20% if you click the link and buy it with code POKEYNE. Give me some internet money. Ultimately, thank you guys so much for watching. I have to edit this sucker and then go to the gym. It is almost 2 in the morning. Well, it'll be 2 in the morning by the time I leave. So I'm going to get to work. Uh, have a wonderful night.